You are welcome to the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional today, Friday, October 15th, 2021. The topic we have says, A new creature. A new creature. Let us pray. Our Father, we worship you. We thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Holy Spirit Divine, please teach us yourself. Let your word transform us indeed into your image as you promised. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to look at your word. It says, a new creature. That's the topic of our lesson today. Now, our Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. We'll be reading verse 3 to 6. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. And I'll be reading the King James Version. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. The Bible memory verse for the day is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things have become new to the person who is in Christ Jesus. For us all, all things have become new as well in Christ Jesus. If so happens, you're not yet in Christ Jesus. At the end of this this Bible, this discussion of uh, today's topic, there will be the opportunity for you to give your life to Christ, so all things that needed become new. Now, one of the major signs of a person who has become born again is newness of the life he or she lives. A newness of life that he or she lives is one of the major signs. That's why I disagree completely with those who say, well, if you give your life to Christ, nothing really changes. It's, um, it's in your heart. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're a new creature, you're a new creature inside out. You're a new creature inside out. We'll discuss this a bit further. For example, when Zacchaeus gave his when, when Zacchaeus turned around from his evil ways of extorting money from others, he, he was very clear about what, what his next steps were. He said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore unto him fourfold. That's Luke 19.8, the Gospel of Luke 19.8. That's a complete turnaround, and that is how what it means to become indeed a new creature. You know, many people keep living sinful lifestyles and they say, Well, I'm giving my life to Christ and I'm just work in progress. To, let's stop lying to ourselves. We are it is expected that when you give your life to Christ, you know, there's a complete turnaround in your life, and it will be evident, you know, that indeed you've given your life to Christ. I've already lost certain an example of an adulterous woman who's married someone else's husband and then gives his, gives her life to Christ and stays in that man's home house and is speaking in tongues from there. However, then how do you explain that? How do you explain that? When a person truly becomes born again, the person's life must show that transformation has occurred. The Bible says, that but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Matthew 3 7 to 8. Matthew 3 7 to 8. When we repent, it means you have you have forsaken your old ways and indeed becoming a new creature. And that's so the, the, spirit, the religious leaders John the Baptist was speaking to in this scripture I just read Matthew 3, 7 to 8. You know, they humbled themselves. They humbled themselves and came to be baptized 
so they could have spiritual growth. Now, there's a lesson here. All of us who, who claim that to have risen through the rank and files of established churches and ministries and believe that they they can't they've reached their, their height and there's no much more growth for them. There's a lesson here for us to learn. This these spiritual leaders, actually some of them, not all of them, did actually come to meet John to be baptized because they realized that they still had much more growth spiritually to attain. Now it's important for us to note that a regenerated spirit is one that has undergone a change. There may be a need to change friends. There may be a need to change what you eat. There may be a need to change how you dress and so on in order to conform with the image of the Son of the Living God. Indeed, there may be that need. I recall a story that our Father in the Lord shared about a, a couple, a married couple, who were always fighting. Our neighbors already knew. They, they, they fight daily. So, as a matter of fact, he explained that neighbors would not go to sleep. They would, because they realized that once they go to sleep, those people will still fight. So, they rather just wait. When the fight of that evening happens and they've shouted and they're quieting, then all the neighbors can go to sleep. Then all of a sudden, the fighting stopped. After a week, two weeks, and a some more time, one neighbor was curious enough to go and meet them and say, ah, what happened? You people are no longer fighting. And they said, well, we met the Prince of Peace. And we've given our lives to him. And since then, there's been peace in our home. That transformation was noticed immediately. And their life, the peace they experienced, even drew some of their neighbors onto, into the kingdom. So, brethren, to become a new creature is to become a new creature in and out. Completely to become a new creature in and out. And for those who say it is the heart that should change, the outward appearance could still be as that of the people in darkness. I want to tell us that the scripture says in Proverbs 4.23 that we should keep our hearts with all diligence for out of it are uh, issues of life. If the heart produces the issues of life or the reality of life that we see, then if your heart has been regenerated, then you cannot be projecting as someone who has not been regenerated if it, indeed the heart creates the issues of life. So you see, even that argument does not hold water. That it is the heart that is born again. The body can remain or the outward appearance can remain as that of one who is a sinner. Because how do you want to explain a, 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 a female who wears clothing that exposes her cleavage, exposes her, her body parts, and then says she's been regenerated. What has been regenerated in that? When you are dressed in a way that could lead others to commit sin. And of course, this is not just about women. Also the men. If you if you are the kind that you, you're a night crawler, you go from one pub to the other, indulging in alcohol, then you've given your life to Christ. And you still continue in this lifestyle. How then can we say? Because if you continue to live like that, you would of course be exposed to all sorts of other kinds of sin. And there's no way your spiritual man will grow living that kind of riotous life. So how then can you say you've been regenerated? And if it so happens you've not given your life to Christ yet, or you have, and you realize that you are still living as one who has not even given their life to Christ. There's an opportunity here today. Now is the time of salvation and I want to encourage us to share this prayer with me and say, Father, I confess all my sins, confess all of them that you've been living in and ask and promising you would never return to them. Ask for grace not to return to them. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, is your Lord and Savior. Ask that his blood will cleanse your sins away and that he should write your name in the book of life. And in Jesus' name you have prayed. Amen. Congratulations. Your name has just been written in the book of life. And you have been welcomed into the family of God. And you indeed have become a new creature. However, I remember becoming a new creature is from inside out, not just in the inside. God bless you as you have listened. And I leave us with the action point for today. It says, examine your life carefully and make all the necessary changes required for you to truly become a new creature in Jesus Christ. God bless you.